Captains of Industry, brought to you by Airtel. You're watching a special edition of Captains of Industry being recorded on the sidelines of the World Economic Forum. One of the delegates who's also a member of the World Economic Forum's Business Roundtable on Corporate Governance and also their sessions on International Business and the Advisory Committee on Auditing Council. He is uh, Tim Flynn, who's the chairperson of KPMG International and as I said, a member of the Advisory Committee on Auditing uh, that was set up by the former US Treasury Secretary, Hank Paulson. Thank you very much for your time. So, Apparently, issues of leadership and ethics are quite important to you, and I think it speaks to the work that you're doing here at WEF on the uh, roundtable on uh, international business and corporate governance. What's that about? Well, the, when you, when you, from my standpoint, one of the most important things for leaders to do is to create a highly ethical culture in their organization and to make sure that they understand the responsibility of being a leader. And to me, leadership is about the ability to get other people to put their trust in you. And as a leader, you have to live up that trust every single day and understand that responsibility that goes along with that. And so from the standpoint of integrity and governance and proper oversight and structure, those are things that, that I think are critically important to any institution, any business, and to any business leader. Absolutely. So if, if somebody had to describe your leadership style, what would they say? Well, it depends if we're asking my wife at home or uh, <laughs> okay, at Okay, let's at start work. with no, her. Let's, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not the, I'm not the leader there, that's the issue. Um, you know, I don't know, I, I guess I, I would hope how people describe it is uh, one of inclusivity, uh, one that is um, open to different points of view, but also an individual who will take a decision and lead. And I think that balance is what's really important. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting, as you move through your career, it's really easy to give advice to leaders. Yeah. And then you leave the room and you go and the leader sits there by themselves yeah. and they've got to make the final decision. Yeah. So when you're the last person sitting in that chair to make that decision, there's a huge responsibility that comes along with that. Uh, but somebody has to do it as well. And so I think the ability to make those tough decisions and move forward are really important. So obviously you listen well is what you're saying, but you've also got to be decisive. Is that something you've had to learn in your career? Is it something innate? I, I, I don't think listening well comes easy to anybody. I mean, as human beings, we, you know, in particularly in the world today with so speed of information and distractions and everything that goes on around us. So the ability to listen and focus and understand, I, I think something you have to, I have to work at. It doesn't come as natural to me maybe right. as to some others. But you try and be conscious of that. I, I think decision making is something that you either have the confidence and the ability to absorb the facts, listen to the information, mm -hmm. and then you know, make those decisions. And I think that's something that some people really struggle with decision making, right. and others uh, can make a decision and move on and, and, and then go execute. Well, does it make it more complex when you are leading a big team worldwide? Because every comes, everyone comes with their own sort of cultural persuasions, yeah. their local context, and they expect you to be sensitive to that. It's a great, that's a great point. So, so as I was chairman and CEO of the US firm, you, it was a, you, you had your team, you understood the culture across the United States, you grew up in that culture, no. and it was probably easier to affect those decisions. Uh, as I am now chair and senior partner of the global organization, some 140 countries around the world, uh, a 24 member global board of 24 senior partners from countries around the world, uh, coming at things from different perspectives, different backgrounds, different cultures, uh, different biases, yeah. Uh, you have to really work together to make those decisions and sometimes the pace is slower than you would like it to be and you have to accept that. You have to learn how far you can push yeah. and then when you're at the tipping point we've got to back off, back off and accept some compromise. Yeah. Uh, and so I have found it uh, challenging yeah. uh, but also uh, it's been very, um, it's, it makes you grow as a leader. Yeah, character building. Previously, you've been a member of the board and treasurer for the partner of the city of New York. First, tell us what that partner of the city of New York was, and then I'll tell you why. There's a partnership uh, of New York is a group of about 100 or so senior business leaders from New York that, uh, that really come together uh, a number of times a year and ensure that we're looking after our community in terms of how we as business leaders who employ a vast number of people throughout New York 
can make sure that we're doing the right things, giving back to the communities and, and supporting the really important aspects of people's lives, the community, and business as well. Right. The issue is New York has always been seen as the global megacity, the hub of cosmopolitanism, the epicenter of uh, world economics. Then there was 9-11 that shook the, the sense of confidence and the sense of security in the city. Then there was the global financial crisis, which had New York and Wall Street as its epicenter. So it's almost as though New York suffered a double whammy, a double wobbly, and uh, a confidence building that's needed in the city. Do you find that that's the case? Well, they're two very different events, right? Um, the tragedy of 9-11 is beyond proportion, and, yeah. and uh, it unified the city and in, 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 in the world around New York. And, um, and we're still living through that today, and, and uh, we'll never forget that. Yeah. The, the financial crisis is a much different matter. It's, 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 it's something that uh, was created, many people believe, through New York, through the capital markets, through the investment banks. Uh, and that's fine. That's fair. I mean, clearly a lot of the financial instruments were created and came out of there. They were replicated around the world, perched around the world, and, yeah. and, and endorsed around the world. But yeah. there's no question New York was at the heart of many that were happening. Uh, and, and I think there's no question that, that what's happened coming out of that financial crisis uh, has maybe knocked New York down a notch, but New York is a very resilient city, mm -hmm. uh, understands its responsibilities of the world as a business leaders, mm -hmm. uh, I think has responded well to the crisis and, and, and is trying to do the right thing, rebuild trust and confidence, and I, I'm confident that they are doing the right thing and, and uh, New York will play a very important role around the world. Uh, but there's no question that we all be humbled when we go through things yeah. like this. Please tell us more about the work that you do with the Major League Baseball Outreach Program. I mean, we don't play baseball uh, in South Africa, and certainly not in Africa. We play cricket. <laughs> so first, just tell us the love that you have for baseball and then this outreach program. Well, well baseball was American pastime, and, and as a young boy growing up, we all played baseball, young girls playing softball, and, and yeah. so it was really part of a way communities came together. You created teams, and it was maybe one of the first experiences kids had in teamwork and working together and in particular uh, kind of getting on that baseball diamond and forgetting all those problems you might have yeah. wherever you came from. At KPMG, we really look at uh, importance of giving back to the community. Yeah. And we focus on education. Yeah. And we focus it in three areas. Uh, we've created a, at, the, at the university level a PhD support program to encourage African Americans to get their PhDs so they can become role models and attract mm -hmm. more diversity into the profession. Mm -hmm. So that was at, the, at that level. At, at the level of high school and grade school and, and old, junior high school and high school from 10 to 18 years old, we teamed with Major League Baseball for a number of years in, 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 in picking inner city programs so that we would have kids come together as baseball teams and play baseball and that they may not have in their community the support needed to make that happen. Yeah. So through base, Major League Baseball, our firm supported it. And then from the time they spent in the diamond, baseball, they spent an hour in the classroom. Okay. And we teach them mathematics and science and right. different things associated using uh, our people to teach those skills. So it's a way to really help create a sense of community mm. and to show the importance of not only being good in the diamond, mm. but being good in the classroom as well. Mm. And then for early education, it's about literacy. And we teamed with a group called First Book. Mm. Uh, and my wife Susan and my deputy chairman's wife, Beth Vimar, started a program at KPMG mm. called the KPMG Family for Literacy. Mm. They've given away over three million books to underprivileged kids. Mm. And they, they get these, the spouses and extended family of KPMG partners and mm. employees to get on school buses, go to schools, yeah. deliver age-appropriate books, read them to the children. Right. And, uh, you know, if you give a child a gift of reading, it just dramatically increases right. their ability to be successful in life. And so it's been a very rewarding program. So we kind of have three phases that we look at helping right. education. Could that be replicated in other KPMG uh, offices as well, where we've also got a lot of social problems across countries in Africa. We've also got skills deficits where we also need to attract young uh, people into the financial services and accounting professions. Yeah, it's, it's a great point. And, and so as, as I moved into my global role, Susan has extended this program as part of the global outreach that we're doing. 
And so we're working now in India in, in creating a family fertility program there, and we hope to do it in Africa and other parts of the world as yeah. well. But it's, a, it's an amazing program, even in the U.S., in, in underprivileged households. Uh, there's one book for every 300 children. Yeah. If you look at it in, in middle-income families, there's 13 books for every child. Mm -hmm. And think of that gap. And if we can close that gap and give the gift of reading, yeah. it changes lives. Who's been the greatest influence over your career? As a parent, your wife has a lot of influence over you, a very positive influence, but a mentor. You know, I, I've been blessed um, with a number of really terrific mentors throughout my career. I, I really, really have, and it's, it's played a critical role in, I think, allowing me to achieve where I am today. There are probably a couple that stick out. Uh, Jim Brocksmith uh, was former deputy chairman of the uh, U.S. firm, and Jim really gave me my first leadership opportunity running the Midwest manufacturing practice. He uh, asked me to join a group of called Leadership 2000, which was back in 1996, of grooming the next set of leaders for the firm. And, uh, and then Jim gave me my first opportunity in 1996, uh, 93, excuse me, to lead the manufacturing practice in the Midwest. Coming out of that, uh, I worked for a gentleman named Bill Simon in that, in that first leadership role. Mm. And, uh, and Bill was a huge influence, helping give me the confidence and the support to, um, at a pretty young age, step into an important role. Uh, and, and we're great friends still today with both Jim and with Bill. But both those gentlemen, at a time of, of uh, transformation in my career, right. out of being a line partner into leadership, right. uh, they both were very critically helpful. And a final question. Obviously, you've said, you know, throughout your career, you've learned to listen, to compromise, and to be decisive. But what is the philosophy that really informs who you are as a man and corporate leader? You know, you, you try to do the best you can every day. Uh, and you're faced with a lot of decisions you have to make in your personal life and your business life. And, and I think the key here is do the best you can, make those decisions, and then move forward and execute. I, I, I tell people today and, and, and have a chance to speak to a lot of students. And, you know, people say, well, how did you get in your career? How did you end up in that chair? How did yeah. you get there? And I said, yeah. you know, you can't pick your destination in life, but you can pick your paths. And so be very thoughtful as you're presented opportunities. What path do you want to pick? Yeah. How will that path influence where you want to go? And, and are you willing to put forth what it takes to go down that path? And then the destination will be where it is. Wow. But if you take the thoughtful effort, pick the path you think is right for you at the time, and execute the best you can, then it's up to fate and how things come together. Poignant views there from Tim Flynn, who's the global chairperson of KPMG. I thank you so much for being our captain of industry and availing us your time here at the World Economic Forum. Best of luck to you and to your wife for the work that you're doing across the world. Thank you. It was delightful. Really enjoyed it. All right, that's our captain of industry for this edition. Tim Flynn, the global chairperson of KPMG International. I can't add to anything that he said. Philosophical, uh, conscientious, decisive and uh, quite excited about the changing geopolitical order in which we live.